First day of every new science class, I would tell my students the same thing. You can be wrong in here every single day, and as long as you can tell me why, you can still get the A, because that is science, trying to figure out what went wrong. My name is Sarah, and after 10 years in the classroom, I joined 240 to help teachers just like you pass their certification tests. This video is going to prepare you for the GACE Science Assessment, number 524. This is the big science test to take if you'd like to teach science in grades 6 through 12 in Georgia. And this video is going to cover three things. What's on the test and how it's organized, the most likely concepts that will be on the test, and we're going to look at a few practice questions. There is a lot to cover, so let's get to it. Now the Gay Science 524 consists of two subtests. Subtest 024 covers the nature of science and life science. And then 025 gets into physical science and earth and space. Each subtest consists of 80 multiple choice test questions. And you can take each subtest on its own, or you can take the two together. Buckle up if you are taking these two together because that is 160 multiple choice questions to complete. We'll look at each subtest separately and give you the information you need to make the right call for how you want to test. Ready? Let's dive in. Let's start with subtest one, which is split into two sub areas. Now this first one is a doozy. Scientific inquiry, processes, technology, and society. Yes, that is all one sub area. And the second one, a little bit easier, physical science. You're going to see about 24 questions from sub area one and 56 from sub area two. Now we can break each sub area down even further. So stay with me here. The scientific inquiry, processes, technology, and society sub area can be broken down into two objectives. You'll need to understand the nature of scientific inquiry and processes and understand the relationship of science and technology to society and the environment. Let's start by taking a closer look at scientific inquiry. The biggest thing here shouldn't be a big surprise. If you are taking a science test, you had to expect to see some questions on the scientific method. You'll need to know all the steps of the scientific method and how to do each one. So that's problem, observation, hypothesis, experiment, data, and conclusion. And to take it a step further, you're probably going to see some questions where you're told about an experimental setup, and you need to identify the best step to perform next in a proper experiment. You may even be asked to determine where a group of students went wrong in their experiment. So you'll need to be able to apply each one of the steps of the scientific method to any procedure thrown your way. Nice! Next up, science, technology, and the environment. This section is all about how the actions humans take impact the natural world. While this topic can get really broad, there's one big idea here to focus on. How the greenhouse effect can impact climate change. More greenhouse gases released into Earth's atmosphere by human pollutants can cause a greenhouse effect, keeping more of the sun's heat trapped within the atmosphere instead of being released back into space. Other big ideas here? deforestation, water pollution, overusing resources, and ozone depletion. And that's just the short list. But don't worry, if you need some help remembering the finer details of each of those broad topics, we've got all that information in your 240 study guide. All right, let's move on to the second part of subtest one, physical science. Just like before, we can break this subsection down a little bit further. Here, you'll find objectives on matter, chemistry, and physics. Let's start at the top by taking a closer look at what you can expect to see in the matter objective. You'll need to know about the parts of an atom. Actually, I've got an idea. Our study guide is full of videos that can walk you through this content and everything else you need to know for your test. How about I show you one of our videos right now? Atoms have a very small, dense nucleus forming their central core made of positively charged protons and neutrally charged neutrons. They also have a much larger cloud of negatively charged electrons that orbit the nucleus. Note that while atoms are often drawn with the electrons orbiting like planets, they actually exist in a cloud. Let's review how to remember the parts of an atom in simple terms. Protons are positive 
and in the nucleus. Neutrons are neutral and in the nucleus. Electrons are negative and in the cloud. Great stuff, right? We've got a lot more where that came from. Let's keep on cruising to chemistry. The big thing here is the organization of the periodic table. So you'll want to know where to find different kinds of elements, like how the metals are on the left and the non-metals are on the right. You'll also need to be able to break down all the information found in each element square on the periodic table, like how the atomic number, which for nitrogen is seven, indicates that a nitrogen atom has seven protons. The last objective in this sub area is physics. Here, it's important to know Newton's laws and all the vocabulary words that go with them. So terms like inertia, or how an object resists a change in motion, will show up in this objective. And you'll need to use Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration, to solve problems. But if it's been a minute since you've worked with these equations, don't worry. We've got tons of practice problems in our study guide. Guess what? We've made it through the whole first subtest. One down, one to go. Subtest two covers life science, which will make up about 48 questions on your exam. And earth and space science, which will make up about 32 questions on your exam. And just like we did before, we'll break these sub areas down into objectives so that you know what you need to focus on for your test. Let's start with life science, which can be broken down into cells and genetics and evolution and ecology. Let's get out our microscopes and take a closer look at cells. Get it? Because you use microscopes to look at cells? Eh? Oh, you got it. It just wasn't funny. Cool, cool. Moving on. So we're talking about knowing the difference between plant and animal cells and what all the organelles inside of them do. Like how plant cells have cell walls while animal cells don't. And that the mitochondria are the powerhouses of the cell. You know, we got a comment on one of these videos that said, she looks just like a science teacher, someone who would tell you that the mitochondria are the powerhouses of the cell. I mean, they are, and I am, so nailed it. And don't forget, cell stuff is only half of the objective. There's still the whole genetics part. And that's where you're going to need to know how to work one of these bad boys, a Punnett square and all the vocabulary that goes along with it, like the difference between dominant genes and recessive genes, and how they impact an organism's genotype and phenotype. Any organism that has at least one copy of the dominant gene will show the dominant phenotype, but an organism needs two copies of the recessive gene to show the recessive phenotype. Whew, got all that? Moving on to evolution and ecology. There is a ton in this objective. You need to know about the mechanisms of evolution, the fossil record, how to classify organisms, the structure and function of plants and animals, and population dynamics. I know, there's like tons of college courses worth of stuff right in there. But don't worry, we cover it all in our study guide. For now, let's brush up on the structure and function of plants. Let's peek into our study guide again. I'll let one of our fantastic tutors, Veronica, walk you through it. Vascular plants also use stomata, small openings on leaves, to move materials. These openings allow for the exchange of gases through diffusion. The gases moving include evaporated water, carbon dioxide, and oxygen. When water evaporates out of the leaves through the stoma, it's called transpiration. And remember, this movement of water is an important step in the water cycle. Great, right? We're so close, just earth and space science left. The earth and space science sub area has three objectives listed, earth's structure and processes, earth's cycles, and astronomy. Starting with Earth's structure and processes, where we cover how Earth was formed, including its layers and how they change over time. One key layer of Earth is the lithosphere, which forms tectonic plates. Movement within the lithosphere drives constructive and destructive processes. As two plates move apart, the mantle comes up and constructs new crust. 
Next up is Earth's cycles. And while Earth has a lot of cycles, pay specific attention to the water cycle. Let's hit the highlights, shall we? Liquid water changes into a gas state, known as water vapor, and moves into the atmosphere through the two main methods of either evaporation or transpiration. The water vapor rises into the upper atmosphere where it cools and condenses, forming clouds. The droplets continue to stick together and eventually the droplets are too heavy to remain in the cloud. They fall back to Earth's surface as a form of precipitation, so either rain or snow or sleet or hail. The falling precipitation can land directly into the bodies of water or on land where surface runoff takes it into the bodies of water. It can also percolate into the ground and become part of the groundwater supply. Boom. That was the thunder that came with the precipitation. Get it? And with that terrible joke, we've only got one objective left, astronomy. A big thing to know in this section is the relationship between the Earth, the Sun, and the Moon, meaning how tides or day and night, seasons, and even eclipses work. So you'll definitely want to know your lunar cycle. Make sure you know where the moon is in relation to both the Earth and the sun during its whole 28-day cycle. And that's it, we've covered all the objectives. But remember, we only looked at a key idea or two from each one. So if you want the confidence to know you're ready to pass your gay science exam, you'll want to subscribe to our study guide. But for now, Ready to see some questions? Yeah. Let's look at some practice questions to show you how these objectives can appear on your test. Remember way back in the beginning of this video when we talked about the scientific method? Let's look at how that's reflected in a question. Which of the following questions would be the best to ask students when they're developing a hypothesis? What do you see? What does the data show? How will you test this? Or what could be the cause? A hypothesis attempts to answer the question before the actual experiment is performed. So this is the best answer. Let's look at one from the physical science objective. Ah, here is one of those Newton's law questions. At the ice rink, Bettina pushes on her friend Marta, who is free to move because she's on ice skates. Marta's mass is 40 kilograms. How large was the force of Bettina's push if Marta accelerates at four meters per second squared? According to Newton's second law, the force required to make Marta accelerate equals her mass multiplied by her acceleration. So force equals 40 kilograms times four meters per second squared, which is 160 Newtons. Had enough of physical science? Let's move on to life science, specifically genetics. Consider the following Punnett square. If capital A is dominant over lowercase a, what percentage of the offspring would be expected to show the dominant phenotype? Any organism that contains a dominant gene will show the dominant trait. Two of the four boxes here contain a dominant gene, so this answer is correct. 50% of offspring would be expected to show the dominant phenotype. Moving on to Earth and space. Which of the following moon phases occurs within the next four nights following a new moon? A new moon occurs when the moon is on the same side of Earth as the sun. After a new moon, a small sliver of the bright side of the moon is visible on Earth. This sliver grows into a crescent moon within three and a half days. An increase in the size of the bright side is called waxing. So A is best. We made it. Remember, that was just a small sliver of content and practice questions to give you an idea of how these concepts are assessed on the test. Congratulations on finishing the video. If you found it helpful, give it a like. There's still plenty more to learn. Did you know that our study guide has tons of practice questions? If you really want to make sure you're prepared for the gay science exam, take the next step and subscribe to the 240 study guide. It has hours of videos so that you can watch and or listen while doing chores. It's test aligned so you know precisely what you need to study. And it has hundreds of practice questions so you can be sure you're ready. And it has the money back guarantee. So click the link below right now to get started. Because unfortunately, you don't get a chance to explain to the computer why you were wrong.